Good evening, pirates. We are live. It's a uh, hangout in the crib, and we've got a pretty full panel today. Uh, so I'm the BP professor, and we've got Tito. Hello, everybody. And G Daddy. Hey, guys and girls. Sorry, G Daddy D. Were, were you waiting for me to finish your name? Yeah, you missed the D. Okay. G Daddy D. Wouldn't want to offend. We got Hefe. Howdy. And Disturb Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, anyway, so tonight we're going to talk about the whip. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on mega ships. We'll talk about the 70s. We'll talk about. Uh, I'm missing something big. The 1970s? No, not the 1970s. That, that summarized in bell bottoms and bad music. Um, uh, the 70 Armadas. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, whatever else is in the slides, because it's been two days, so I forgot what's in them. So, um, and Zeppelin uh, is bad sh- music. I don't know what to think about that. Well, there's, I mean, I guess it's not all bad, but yeah, I was, uh, disco came to mind, so. Uh, all right, so let's see what we got. First of all, we got the schedule in the whip. So uh, mega ships go live tomorrow. That's probably why we can't coin them just yet. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, we'll we'll talk more about that in the mega ship section. The uh, August raid starts on August 11th. Civil War schism. In case you don't know how to pronounce that word, it's schism. Might rhyme with something. Um, we'll have some slides on the new prizes and stuff like that. Uh, August 17th, new FM cycle and a little bit of change there. VXP weekend on the 19th, new flagship sub campaign on the 23rd, and uh, coming soon, as trademarked by Kixi, uh, new R&B levels. So uh, stay in suspense with her suspenders. <laughs> All right, Forsaken Missions. Um, oh, hey, look at that. So um, after the raid, the first Forsaken Missions cycle is going to have a change to the targets. They are retiring the level 107 which we all know. Uh, some of us love it. Some of us are used to it. Some of us don't love it. Um, and there will be two new targets, a level 109 and a level 102. Uh, level 9 is supposed to be more t- more difficult but fewer attacks. And the 102 is supposed to be grindable with uh, less damage, more hits. And so there. We will see if this works. Uh, I guess, uh, Hefe, you found this from Laredo, that uh, it looks like four 109s will get you a cycle through the FM instead of five 107s, and then eight to ten 102s. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what he knew at that point in time. Um, And I also highlighted the slightly more since, uh, you know, Doom Rooster told us... uh, for the subs that we were going to get a, a, a small amount of uh, small ad- amount of damage would show on our subs. <laughs> right. So, does anybody think they needed a change? I don't think Personally, they need I don't. It. You can go. Personally, I, I didn't think they did, but I don't see what their analytics are. I know some people are able to rip through them, and maybe they're not happy about that. Um, but as far as the player base, I, I, I've seen a lot of people... That, see, the only issue is the people are building to the 107s. They're building ships to try to do the 107s effectively. So hopefully they don't change the mechanics of them too much to yeah, throw that, off that, that, those builds that are in the pro- in progress at this point, or just recently completed. Yeah, I don't expect different 
turret types or anything. I, I would bet there might be some more arcs or something like that. What were you going to say, Disturbed? I was going to say the same thing. I don't think people were... Most of the people who hit them didn't really want it to change, but I know a lot of the mid, uh, lower, high-end level people who didn't have the police spell court will be happy about it. Yeah. I think the biggest problem with how the mission was set up before is that those 87s, you know, if you can deal with those arcs with like a pinch or something, the 87s are really harder than the 107s. So, you know, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, I, I could envision something where the, just off the cuff, that the, the 102 will have no arcs and the 109 will have four. I mean, if they're making something, a slight change like that, I could, I could see that working out for people. But I don't know what the change is going to be. Me, personally, I... I couldn't hit the 107s, and I think it might be, and um, on kick size part, the idea of the 109s coming in is just so that it's a little bit harder than the 107s, and then there's also a 102 for the lower levels. I don't know what price they're going to put in those there, you know, like uh, score-wise. Well, if you look at the slide, Laredo said... Um, you know, if you divide the 350 by 8 to 10, so about, um, you know, uh, 35 million, 35 to 40 million for the 102s, yeah. and then 75 plus for the 109s. Yeah, that's what I thought. Look, I said that about five weeks ago that they were going to do a 35 million target because you have to do 10 targets then for 350 mil to like the round figures. So what what gives you the most trouble in those 107s? Oh me, I can't I can't even do them. Not yet anyway. I'm building Apollos at the moment. Okay. All right. You can do um, them quite effectively with one Apollo and um, a bunch of Citadels or some other um, remote targeting mortar ship. Right. It takes a little bit of driving, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got nothing but time to practice, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else on the mission? I think uh, we'll talk about the new targets next. Um, well, I've got to do my uh, missions as of yet. Another one just started, so I can do them over at weekends, something like that, but I just got my base smashed while doing a live stream, so I'm a bit gutted about that. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it in a bubble, so that's even better for me, really. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, new prizes. So they announced four new prizes. Um, we've got an anti-missile proliferation system. Uh, increases multi-shot, anti-missile range, and anti-missile accuracy. Looks kind of custom built for switchblades to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bit late, I would say, no? Because the race cycle is going to be over by the time you get this, so I don't know what profit are you going to get, but okay. I don't think missiles have got enough length, though, range, though. You would have to assume that a new prize is going to come out. It looks very... I mean, the, the impact it's going to have on the switchblades is, I don't know, I, I assume that there's going to be something else that comes out that's going to complement this. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, we've got Mimicus System. I don't know if I pronounced that right, because I've never seen that word before. Um, so, cloak time with cloak efficiency. So, battery plus cat drive for... Um, Basically, just another way to save a special on a sub, Agreed. and allow you to use, and allow you to use speed system five, as opposed to Magnus two, because I'm assuming this isn't going to stack with Magnus two. Do you think there's any chance that subs are going to get a fifth and sixth slot like the ships have now, since as as they've been labeled as ships and they can't be released until hundred percent? I don't know. I, I mean, we'll, we got a picture of the new prize, but we don't know how many slots it's going to have. 
And I think it's about time it got five or six slots now. I think that the value of that, especially for subs, will be on which uh, group they put it for refitting and which of the two stats you are increasing. Mm -hmm. okay. But they're putting less and less stuff in the, um, in the retro lab. You know, I don't know if the Mimica system would even make it to the retro lab because it seems like a lot of the new stuff isn't at least so far, not making it there. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, we got the uh, Blunderbuss turret. Uh, they talk about it as being a siege cannon improvement, but it is called a turret, so I assume it's for base defense. Yeah, but what siege cannon turret we have? Well, you know, you know what I could see is we've got you, you know, we've got the uh, frost bite. The glacial. Well, well, I'm talking about like the real short ranges, right? You got the frost bite, yeah. you got the scatter guns, and so maybe it's going to be something along those lines. You know, like a like a ballistic, uh, you know, like a ballistic scatter gun almost. So so you're dealing ballistic damage, which. Works pretty I, well against so you see that the turret, not as as special, because I I don't know, just for the the comment here, uh, it seems a bit uh, confusing. What this could be at the end? Y yeah, yeah, right. Because they talk about it as a siege cannon improvement. So I don't know. Maybe it's a ship weapon better than a siege cannon. I uh, thought it was a special Tito. I thought I don't know since it says that it's an improvement uh, for uh, for siege cannons. Uh, you could, don't know if it could be an special for ships, special for f things like the ballista, for example, the javelin that uh, gets something at short range. I have no idea. I think it's a bit pointless having short range really in a base anyway. To be honest, because there's that much stuff that can outrange it. It's shot before it's shot off anyway. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think again, it would have to be, you know, like similar range to those scatter guns and 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 frost bites to have any use at all. Yeah, that's um, yeah. what I'm thinking. Because 105 range seems to be the uh, the short range terms nowadays. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, agreed. All right, and then uh, a new Zenthanide armor, CO armor has corrosive resistance. And uh, some deflection. I'm guessing only the D5 is going to have deflection. I wouldn't count on it at the lower levels. But Can I just say, Larry, if you say that name fast, it's infinite armor, D2, D5, CO, don't, don't you think it sounds like R2, D2, and C3PO's name mixed? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> just something to lighten the subject. <laughs> it's the new droid. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> new droid Zim Farmer. All right. Well, you think when it says a certain siege deflection could be something in the line of that uh, armor for tourists we got a few months ago that was compressive resistance? But instead of being something huge, is small and goes increasing as you get better armor? I don't know. I just want to bank on there being anything but the, the 20 Siege and 20 Assault that, that we see at D5 on a whole bunch of other armor types. I, I, I don't... I don't know. I wouldn't... Anybody? I, I don't know. It, well, it yeah, seems to me, actually. Sorry. Go on. No, go ahead. No, I, I just assume, like like you do, that it's going to be like the D5M and, and everything else, that it's just going to follow the same pattern that we've seen before. We don't have any... No, we don't have any evidence that it's going to be any different than that. I mean, the, interest, the interesting new twist that they did recently was with the uh, the new stealth armors by giving them all the same build times, which is the only change that they've made recently to their their general structure for uh, for their armors. You know that they all have the five hour and twenty four, whatever the the build time is, but it's identical from D two to D five, which is 
the only big change that I've seen that they've done recently. I did not know that. Oh, you missed that show. <laughs> yeah, I know. I should watch this show. It's really good, even when I'm not on it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, all right, learn something new. All right, anything else on these new FM prizes? Okay, moving on. The Hellwraith. <laughs> all right, uh, Hefe, you found this stuff. You want to talk through these uh, slides? Um, sure. I mean, there's really not much to say. This is just directly from the, uh, the work in progress. But a reaver submarine that can only carry underwater weapons, which is different than your uh, the Tiger. You know, I think they're trying to distance themselves from the uh, potential complications associated with uh, surface weapons that we talked about last week. And it boasts an overload ability that increases combat speed, concussive resistance, and explosive resistance after sustaining damage. So the concussive resistance and explosive resistance are directly tied into our new targets, our new sub-targets, the, uh, the Reaver Assault Forces. I'm a little bit... Uh, it's, they consider an overload ability, which normally only occurs for a short period of time in bursts, but it looks a little bit like the same stat boost that the Avenger got, uh, which didn't work out too well because nobody could really control everything. I, I don't know how many people uh, in the panel or uh, in the viewing audience uh, uses the Avenger anymore, but they're more likely to use their uh, MCX or Spectres, which uh, I think came out, all came out before that. Well, I know the MCX did, but this, you know, there's a lot more... Um, it's not a good mechanic because people don't even really like some of the crews that do this because uh, of how it impacts a single ship. Unless the overload ability means that it's going to affect all the ships. If one ship gets that damage, it's going to spread it to the rest. I don't know. It's uh, sort of difficult to tell. Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, I, I need to see the rest of the stats of the sub, but that overload is a bit uh, disappointing because most of the time when you play with subs, you try to get the less uh, amount of damage possible. But yeah, if this were slightly the Midnight Marauders, it's going to be a bit complicated when some ships go ahead of others, while well, subs in this case, because sometimes those are the ones you want to pull back so they don't get more extra damage. So... I don't know. So, I don't like that mechanism of that crew. So I was looking at this a little different. I was looking at it more like a Berserker than an Avenger, and, and, and Hefe and I kind of argued about this a bit when we were making the slides. But, um, you know, the, the Berserker, it, it's very specific that it, it calls it an overload, and it's yeah, the nine limited seconds duration. Overloads. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I'm thinking against these targets, right? If, if you mess up and you get get in one of those cav fields and you get surfaced, you know, what I found is, is all my ships get shot at at the same time if I'm bringing multiple. So, you know, one would hope that all my ships overload at the same time. And then uh, this would give them a burst of speed that might help them get away. So... I don't know if it's going to be bad. It might work like Hefe said. It might work like I'm thinking. We'll just have to wait and see. But um, it's the new sub. It's released, what, a month before the raid starts? So you might be able to build two. Maybe yeah, more. and according to the roster, we will be happy to wait till next Tuesday when they release the real stats. It looks like it's got a bit of a phallic shape to me. <laughs> don't you think? Well, you know, it's longer than it is wide. Yeah. And, and, and you haven't actually... I assume you don't own any barracudas. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> I've got barracudas, yeah. <laughs> they're, okay. they're even well, worse. Well, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is, this is uh, tame relative to the original barracuda before the R5 you know, yeah, that, skin. That one's also yeah. got tickly bits, though, hasn't it? <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, go on, carry on. 
I don't know. Why don't you guys uh, post in chat? Which is more phallic, the Hellwraith or the Barracuda? Oh, the Let Barracuda. us know. We'll, we'll take your results uh, in a little while. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Hellwraith. Moving on. More raid prizes. The Fire Twister Torpedo. Not the strip bar in... Um, Oh, shoot. Dust Till Dawn, right? The Titty Twister? Yeah, I think that's... Uh... Yeah, since we're talking... All right, anyway. Uh, Fire Twister Torpedo. And, and, and that was the weirdest movie. You know, I, for the first... Uh, no, I liked it, but for the first half an hour, I had no idea. I, I watched it. I didn't, I didn't watch it originally. I had no idea. It showed up on HBO one night. And I'm like... The first half an hour was the normal, you know, that you sort of expected out of Tarantino, and then all of a sudden it's a vampire movie. So, sorry, yep. spoiler alert, pleasure, you know. Oh, yep. It's still worth yeah. watching. Yeah, good movie. Especially and for all, all three names are weather as well, or a, a disaster of some kind. Uh, what? Three names of what? All the three names, the fire, the twister, and the torpedo are a disaster of some kind. Natural oh. disaster. Or a human disaster with fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and we get a little uh, carryover from the cyclone uh, launcher. Right. Right. All right, so anyway, what do we got? Long-range torp, moderate damage, decent reload. I mean, it's all vague. You know, hopefully this will have the same or better range than the scourge torps. Yeah. Speed, speed boost, we all love that. Yeah, combat boost, yeah. Combat boost with a range of 88 with spec out of that, and let's see what comes. Yeah. And then it's got like a vulture style when you're beat up, it crit it's more likely critical, so I'd still rather not get beat up. It looks nice though, doesn't it? It looks like a nice torpedo. Uh, uh, I've done a good job. Okay, yeah, I like the art. Well, th that's actually the picture of the special. The uh, torpedo hasn't, uh, they haven't released the art for that oh. yet. No, oh, right. Oh, okay. So, so G Daddy D, does, does the uh, art look phallic to you? Um, yeah, could do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what Just that means. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see. So the the special we've got sealed fire charge, um, ship special increases torpedo crit chance and damage at the cost of cloak efficiency. So what they did with the deluge missiles and all the surface fired missiles that they still haven't uh, really explained to everybody yet. You know, it's exactly how that works as far as if you have more on a ship at what level and things of that nature. It still seems to be a little bit murky exactly how that cloak efficiency is uh, sacrificed. Yep. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it, it might just be like, you know, a minus 10% or something like that, but um, I don't know. I guess, I guess you're just going to a risk if you put that on, right? Nobody really knows what cloak efficiency you need. Does that actually mean that... Wait a minute, let me read that out. A ship special that increases torpedo critical chance and damage at the cost of cloak efficiency. Does that mean like it comes available like, you know, like the Reaper when it shoots, it comes available to be shot at? Yeah. Okay. Don't know. I mean, it, like I said, it might, it might just be a minus 10% or something like that, or a minus 20 or whatever they decide it's going to be. Or it might be, like you said, when you shoot, your your cloak gets uh, nerfed just then. I don't know. I yeah. think it's just going to subtract the cloak and not act like the Luke missiles do because it's a special. If it was a weapon, I'd understand it being when it fires, but... A special, I think it's just going to be, you know, minus 10, 20, 30 percent, whatever they decide it is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to see which kind of penalty that gives to body with. But since that, this new sub is a lot focused on critical chances. 
Yeah. Which is always good against deflection targets. Hmm. All right. Moving on to mega hulls, unless you want to talk about prices. Again. Nope. Whatever you like. <laughs> All right, let's talk mega hulls. So they released some more details on the mega hulls. Um, again, supposedly they will be available to coin starting tomorrow. Uh, I'll talk a little more about that in a few slides. But uh, so let's see what we got. We got this sort of detailed look at it. Um, you've got a ship hull, and then it's going to be made up of modules. So you start out with a bridge module, an engine module, and a mega cannon module. And then it looks like you'll be able to add more modules. In this case, they seem to have added a bunch of weapons. Looks like a couple mortar-type weapons and a couple cannon-type weapons. And then you get this little white um, square where you can add more modules. Now, the thing you got to remember about Mega Hulls is that they don't dock. They always stay on the world map. So you actually add these modules and upgrade these modules um, just as your ship is sailing around. So we'll see how that works for everybody. What I don't like about it is, I mean, I ain't even started building them yet. People have already got them, but you can steal from them. It's like having a second base, but with other things to collect for that base. Yeah. Yeah, but but what will you be stealing? The the material that is needed for building any of those models, the complete model, because that's something that has not been quite clarified yeah. yet. So because if slightly hitting your base and getting resources from your base, maybe here you are getting just the resources that you need for building the stuff. Yeah, I think that's more what it is. The yeah, still the uh, resources. Yeah. At this point, it looks to me likely a second island, maybe that has some other abilities. Yeah, yeah. Look, yes. no root, lootable resources. Right. So you got these things, electronics and T things and hexagon things that you got to collect to build your megas. So um, yeah, there will be new resources. Will be lootable, and, and I thought it was described as being lootable from the mega ship itself. So if you attack another player's mega ship and you beat it, you might loot some of the mega ship resources. Um, this is kind of interesting with the weapon arcs. So it looks like this um, hull has some really tight weapon arcs. You gotta line up uh, your your weapon to be able to fire at someone. Might mean it's really easy to take these things down against somebody who's offline. But again, I guess we'll see. Mm. And then the other thing it looks like is you're going to be able to sort of upgrade these weapons once they're built. So this example shows a mega cannon and upgrade level one, upgrade level two, blurry on my screen. It's probably really blurry on yours, but the damage went up about 10% from level 1 to level 2. Mm. So, um, you know, it's going to be a whole new tree and a whole new gameplay style. We'll see how that goes. That, that, that's the ships as well, isn't it, that can be attacked by another mega hull and also up to four player fleets each side? That's, that, that is what they said... Um, Early on, now whether they're sticking with that, you know, player fleets attacking a mega hull, uh, we'll see. If they only but do I, to attack a mega hull, you need another one. Then I think is when you can add the the alliance uh, ships to to support your mega hull to attack the other one. But first of all, you need the mega hull to attack the other one. You cannot attack directly the mega hull with your fleet ships. Well, uh. I. I is that what they said in the latest kind of go around, Tito? Yeah, they said it yesterday in uh, another show, and that's what they defined at the end. I don't remember if it was Laredo or any of the other mods that clarified it a bit. Yeah. They need to they need to really confirm that then, because there's a lot of people thinking they can be attacked with just fleets first. Right. No, it looks the. 
The answer they gave is that to attack a mega hole, you need another one. Then, supposedly, you can add fleets to that mm, and each of these sides to protect or, or attack. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I guess we'll learn more of coming yeah, soon. Yeah, hearing the somebody here in the, in the chat was the, in the other show as well, and he was saying it was Varedo, so yeah. All right. Uh, and then also, just in case, you know, some of the other mechanics here. Um, so the gantry shards, then the Hyperion shards, then the megaship resources apparently are going to be coming from these 91 mega targets. So um, for those of us who got kind of burned out on these things, getting your gantry and Hyperion shards, uh, you get to hit them some more. So that'll be not fun at all. Yeah, so for all those asking what they can do with the Apollos when they finish, well, they know now they can farm these 91 still. They get all the complete Mayhul build. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Forsaken R&D gives the Mega Hull resources, or Mega Ship resources, whatever. <laughs> and then the, the, there's going to be R&D theft. So you get a um, um, Do you think it's the time or resources? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be the time as well because I guess they're going to use the R&D to unlock um, some of these upgrades is what it sounds like or maybe even give some of these resources. So you'll be able to steal that time again. And then uh, also coming soon, Hiving, link up with uh, other mega hulls in your alliance. And that, again, you'll have to be, like, close. I don't know how close, but the closer the better is how it was described. Um, but that won't be active off the bat. And then um, campaign tutorial is also coming soon. So we'll see when that shows up. So let's talk about this last bit. Um, this note from Doom Rooster about mega hulls. So they kind of came out and said that, you know, well, we think they tested it um, and they're bringing it out, but you guys are going to be testing it too. That being said, we consider the first two weeks as live open beta, kind of problems, bugs, blah, blah, blah. Let them, let them tune. Now... Sorry. In other words, if you want to enter into the open beta, you have to coin what right. ninety or or no, how much it was ninety or hundred dollars to complete your Hyperion. Yeah. So I mean, for example, I've got twenty six days left on my Hyperion. I finished my gantry. I don't know some number, a couple weeks after it was, you know, the feature was released. Uh, someone in my alliance has, um, he started his gantry, I think, two or three days after it was released, and then went right into building the Hyperion. And he's still got 17 days left on his Mega Hull. So, in other words, anybody that wants to join this live open beta is going to be paying. And that's where I kind of run into a little issue with this. I, I mean, it, do you really want to spend your money to rush this feature when who knows how well it's going to work. I, th I think I'm the only one who started a Hyperion, so maybe I'm just talking to myself uh, in this panel, but uh, maybe it's something we can talk about on chat, or, or uh, we're going to have an after show today. We'll talk about it on the after show. Um, but but what, do you guys, what do you guys think? I don't like the whole idea, but I mean, I've, you know, you, you have to pay to be our uh, guinea pigs, but there's a chance that they'll get other advantages because it is in beta. I mean, you're jumping to the assumption that everything that's going to go wrong with them will be negative for the player. A lot of times there's some things that are positive for the player that they may then remove. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Or exploit it, right. Yeah, so that they might be uh, in there for the exploits early on and uh, gain an advantage. 
who knows until we actually see it happen. I, I'll just say that it's um, a bit like Battle Pirates 2. Yeah. And the other side is we don't know maybe during that first two weeks we're going to remove all the repairs or something like that. They haven't told us that, but it seems like something like that would make sense. If they're, yes, you coined to get to this place, but since you are our beta testers, we're not going to, we're going to, we're not going to charge you for repairs or, or other things in order for us to be more efficient in gathering data on what we've done right and what we've done wrong. Maybe. I, you know, I, I don't know that they can do that, though, because, uh, you know, the repairs are essentially part of the feature, right? So they almost need that data to do this right. Anyway. All right. Well, uh, maybe we'll talk more on this on the after show. We'll see what people come on and want to talk about. Moving on. Reaver 70s. Um, Hefe, again, you put this together. I think it's really useful. Um, I, I think a lot of people are are unclear in terms of what's in these in these targets. So okay, um, sure. Um, yeah, the primary weapon is uh, that all all of these hulls fire is a concussive cannon, just purely concussive damage with a range of 110. Um, the part of these halls that everybody seems to not really like is the core explosion, which is um, once you kill the ship, it's going to explode and put out a huge amount of damage if you're not prepared for it. It has a 200 range with a minimum splash of 10%, which basically means that the if you're at the very edge of that splash zone of 200, you are at uh, you're only receiving 10% um, of that damage, and then that damage gets split in half again if you're submerged, if you're using a sub. Um, I've also put together on the I can pin it after the show. If you look in the bottom right hand um, corner, I put together a little table explaining the defenses and range and sonar of, of, these, uh, of these targets. Um, you're going to have six scouts, a maximum of ten drones, and the one hulk, and the hulk is what uh, spawns the drones. And you'll see that the, the drones actually have more sonar than the rest of the, uh, than the, rest of the hulls. But the... Um, <clears throat> one second. Um, and you also see that. Uh, oh, oh! I want to talk about the sonar. I put together a little calc, a very simple calculator for people that's on the BP Crib show, BP Crib site, which allows you to put in your cloak efficiency, what haul you have, and and then it'll calculate how close you can get to a target based on your distance. You know, how close you can get past the maximum range of your weapon. And I'll pin that again. Um, a lot of people seem to like it the first time around. So it lets you know if you, you're restricted to a certain weapon, you don't have scorched torpedoes or whatever, how much cloak efficiency you need to be effective. Um, and as you'll see, the drone has the, uh, the most sonar at 150, but the other two are 100. Um, the other big issue associated with this target, and this is a, this is the sort of the lead-in for the um, September raid targets, is if you look at the defenses they have, they're very uh, susceptible to concussion, and they're okay. I'm not jealous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, corrosive does some, but everything else, they basically are telling you don't use it. We're shutting you down on this. Yeah, you know, someone, um, I, I published an article talking about some sub builds and, and surface ship builds, and and somebody said, well, I want to try retributions with launchers. I was like, no, don't use launchers. 
So, um, yeah. It's good you put this out there. I, I think a lot of people are really unclear on in terms of what these guys are firing and what these guys are susceptible to. Yeah, and, and, and for this target, it's all about driving and patience. You have to be patient to figure out, because they have the subsonic cavitors, um, the... Uh, uh, what's the 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 Hulk uh, puts out a uh, at the beginning at the beginning they, it fires mortars off with the subsonic cavitor which will surface any subs, but also uh, keys in really well if you have uh, you want to use surface ships for some reason, and it keys in well to with the um, resonance battery and um, reciprocator. What's the other one? It's not the reciprocator. It's the right. Resonance capacitor. Capacitor, yes, capacitor. And it will it will trigger it will trigger that and increase your reload and dam or damage depending on which one you're using. And uh, it's it's an interesting target, but you just need to drive. If you have anything close to uh, you know anything close as far as sub technology to deal with it, it's all about patience. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you got you to you gotta drive around the subcavitators, and then you got to kind of, you know, wait for each one to blink on, and then blink off, and then go get it. You know, is, is what I basically found. And not yeah, only I, if you haven't got a ghost crawler, though. I guess. You don't have a ghost crawler. Only have crawl, thirty-four starts to go. No, I don't. <laughs> I've got a lot to go. Two, what is it? Two hundred and fifty. Yeah. Yeah, I've got two hundred and fifty to go then. <laughs> But it's a very interesting target, and I think a lot of the the one percenters, this target, unless they build some of those surface ships, because I've seen a lot of the one percenters, at least historically, they just like to go in there and blow stuff up. And this is this is much more surgical because the subsonic cavitators on the scouts. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that only the scouts have their own little blink on, blink off subsonic cavitators which will surface your ships but <clears throat> they all have I think it's I forget if they changed it it's 15 or 20 seconds off but they all have different on times so yeah. it's gonna be a pattern finding process once you start hitting hitting these targets as far as which one's gonna be on for two seconds which one's gonna be on for 10 seconds because they're gonna blink on and off in different ways and they're very difficult to get away from if you get caught in one. And my Just, recommendation yep. is to, if you have five subs, or I, I think eventually people will find that the best way to do this is with two or three subs and not five, is to, if you do mess up and get caught, is to send one of your subs in a different direction and, and make it closer to them. You know, basically bait. So you don't lose your whole haul. Or your whole fleet is what I'm trying to say. And by creating a, a bit of bait that you're just leading them off in the wrong direction because that captator may pop back on and everybody's going to be coming after you. But it's, a, it's an interesting target and it's very different than what we've seen previously. Isn't that what we used to do with Reavers though? We made them chases, didn't we? Yeah, it was always good to have somebody to tank or draw fire. I mean, those are those are really the first targets where that whole tank strategy showed up in Battle Pirates, probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and the um, well, we learned a bit more about kiting them as well, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For a little while, at least. Yeah, cause, well, the, I mean, because they had speed, didn't they? So we had to pick up on speed. That we knew that we had to pick up on speed then to beat them. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it seems to me like with all these little subsonic captivator things in one of these rings that come up, um, they're a bit like an adventure game, you know, like um, Spyro or something like that, where you had to wait for flame to go, then you ran, then you wait for spikes to come up, then you wait for spikes to come outside, and do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh huh. You just got to so um get right timing, aren't you? Sorry, go on, yeah. Larry. No, I was just going to ask, you know, if you're if you're hitting these, are you hitting, you know, I don't know what subs you have or anything, G Daddy D. 
No, I'm not eating these. Uh, well, I don't know. I might have a go. I've got some um, some cudders with B-tops on that I've just refit. Yeah. Um, probably got the wrong thing on them, but the 21 minutes each to repair. That's not bad. Yeah, we're gonna get in repair time in in the next uh, sub repair time in the next slide. All right. Cool. So with that lead in, <laughs> we done talking about the seventies? Yep. All right. Why can't I? Oh, because I'm clicking on the wrong screen. Okay. Um. So sub armor repair. Uh, Hefe, you better talk through this one too. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. Everybody saw what happened to your uh, to your subs with the uh, the last update, with the the damage, quote unquote damage associated with the increase in armor. I didn't notice immediately that it, it, in addition to getting rid of the repair well, and also they got rid of the repair modifier. But in addition to getting rid of the repair modifier, they actually lowered the repair efficiency or improved the repair efficiency. And you know that's how repair efficiency is how many seconds it takes to repair one point of armor. Right. And the, and, and just, the base... Go ahead. Just remember that, that lowers better Right, so so it used to be one second per point, and so that's a repair efficiency of one. So these numbers less than one are mean quicker repairs. Yeah, that's how many. That's how long. That's you know, like um, in the first line of the the table on the bottom left, that means it takes 0.42 seconds to repair one point of armor. Can I just say though that anybody who puts armor on a fleet before it's fully ranked is He's wasting armor anyway, really. And not so time. much anymore. Not with the VXP weekends. It's yeah, it's yeah that's true. I although, mean, I, although, I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I was gonna say though, if you're doing subs against these, you know, sub targets, um, th that may be right. You want to keep them unarmored for a while until you rank them. Maybe. Because then you can um, get lots of offense in here, just, not just committing suicide. I don't yeah. think the armor is going to be used as of yet, but I think in time we might have to armor them, as, especially after VXPs and you've got your top rank on. Well, let's look at this, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, basically, the issue is not only did they get rid of the repair modifier, they gave us a repair efficiency very close to the Apollo. Um, as opposed to being a one second per a point of armor, it's down to 0 0.42 seconds per point of armor. And then, the, you know, we, we had the target search for a while, but, you know, then they had this change go on. But then they released the D2, well, the, the D2 was a, been around since, what, three long, years? Long time. And... Then they recently released the D3, D4, D5, DS with um, additional explosive defense, same build time, same cloaking ability, but additional armor. And that armor across the board has a repair efficiency of 0 0.80, which is almost double what's going on with the base hull. So once you start adding on these heavier and heavier armors, you're increasing your you're increasing your repair time per amount of armor incredibly. I mean, if you go from a base hull to a D5S, you're basically adding 50% of your cost to repair that fleet per armor point. So Right, and, and I think what you see is you're not getting a whole lot more defense. You know, you're going from letting 11% of the damage through to letting 8% of the damage through. So it's probably, you know, you're getting more defense and more defense percentage, but your repair time per target is still probably going to go up. 
Yeah, and 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 that explosive defense that they give with it, it's so much more it, it's so much more efficient to use AA three, which if you look at the at the table in the bottom left, okay, you add on you know you see something significant. It goes from forty to fifty seven, just using the D five S versus D two S or no no explosive armor. But if you add in the um, ablative armor three, I'm sorry, um, you only go from 89 to 92 percent, which is m very minimal. I mean, I don't think that's really going to change anybody's repair time significantly, as far as that portion of it. But you're going to have a significant difference in your repair time, just associated with by, just associated with adding that armor. Yeah. Um, we're we're coming close to tripling the repair time. So if you get caught, if you mess up in a little way, or you get lagged, you're going to go from, in a repair time, let me see, let's split all these numbers in half, you know, basically 35 minutes times 5, so like t almost 3 hours, to um, an hour and a little over, an hour, like an hour and 40 minutes times 5, you're, I don't know. Yeah, three hours to eight hours. Yeah, you look. You're looking at on D5S. You're looking at a 15 hour repair, aren't you? Minus uh, the half, so you seven seven hours repair. That's not too bad, really, with 5S on it. Well, yeah, it's not too bad. It's that compared to less than you know, compared to two and a half hours or three hours, it is kind of bad. Yeah, but you, what I mean is you can use that end at night, go to bed and not worry about it being repaired in the morning as long as it's repaired in overnight. Well, and that's, yeah, that's right. That's a good strategy that, for not quite that, that, That's the way I play anyway, sorry. Yeah, but, but, yeah, what no, I'm, bring up. yeah it's good to bring up, but what I'm saying is you may not screw up right before you want to go to bed. You mm. may screw up at the You may screw up at the beginning of the raid and then you're sort of you're screwed for the rest of the night, you, you, you know, unless you're going to coin the repairs because they need to be 100% repaired for you to launch them again. Mm. You're screwed for the day. Yeah. I mean, that's that's my thought on it. And so, <clears throat> on the right, we have the, uh, you know, a bill, I don't know if everybody agrees with it, but the Sharons are doing a ton of damage um, because of, you know, there's... Besides the uh, Hulk, none of them have any have any concussive damage resistance. As opposed to the sticks, they have a uh, seventy-five percent uh, damage resistance. It's uh, I don't know. It's it, it's going to be fun to see what actually happens once they release this stuff because I think there's I think it's going to be like I'm assuming it's going to be like the Scourge raid where some people will repair prepared and some people were not and <clears throat> yeah and, but I think I think they give us a lot of notice on what's going on which right. is, it was I mean, a good, good thing you know with the scourge at least people that weren't prepared I feel like you know they maybe had an excuse this was really different we didn't know what was coming etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, with this one Everybody knows what's coming. They've been talking about it for, you know, from a month ago. A month on. And then you've got another month to go. Your build times for a halfway decent CUDA or a halfway decent uh, Spectre are under a week. You've maybe even got some surface ship options. I yeah. just think anybody who's not prepared for the raid in September has I'm, only I'm the sure on, I'm not sure on that, uh, EP Professor. They get in mind that uh, they just grew it on the first of the Apollo raids, so mostly got the Apollos on the second and got to build them between the second and the third. So yes, they got a, a month, but if you're taking care that at the same time they built this uh, Apollo raid type, they also changed the Forsaken mission. If you were not a coiner, people is refitting ships to do the 107s that now are changing, uh, building the Apollo fleet to get better luck or 
or get m more profit from the coining or no coining they do for hitting uh, those mega ships or the set A's or the set B's, and now I think this. So they are a bit short on time to do this all. If you also add on that the campaign that comes on the 23, so if they were expecting to put some agenda so they could get the SARS by the beginning of September or being re ready for the raid, they now have been pushed to work a bit harder because on the 23th they start to need those subs to do that campaign that supposedly gives something that many people is expecting, like the Phantom Kuda and the Phantom Inspector for those old levels or even the, the Phantom for the new sub. I do like that the D5, sorry Larry, I do like that the D5S though adds almost 50%, almost 50% time to the repair per point as well. Uh, I don't understand what you mean. That it's well, it's still a it. pretty good repair? Yeah, well I think it's even better if it adds 50% per point and then you've got half repair as well. You're looking at three and a half hours then repair, aren't you? Or is that, am I doing that wrong? I'm crap at maths. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what you mean. I, I mean, you know, what, what we're trying to say with this chart here is that as you add more and more heavier armor, your repair time per point of uh, armor you need to repair per point of damage you took is going up and going up by a lot. Right. So it's, I, I mean, it's not a good thing. You know, the bigger, the more armor you use, the long, the longer you're going to take to repair each point of damage you take. So yeah, I, I, yeah. At the, I agree with the, you know, at the end of the day, what I was trying to say is, <clears throat> you're much better off leveling up your, um, your A3 to your blade of armor three to R15 and slapping it on this hall, as opposed to putting. Uh, D5S, four of them on there. You're you're gonna. I mean, I guess I could have done some more. You know, some better. You know, shown some better numbers, but <clears throat> because you're only getting a 17% um, increase in explosive defense by doing that. But if you just put it on the AA3, <clears throat> as opposed to putting on the um, all that stuff, you're getting a 57, 32% in, right, yeah, 32 percent increase without any extra repair time added. Yeah. You're using a special, but you're not acting, you're not actually adding repair time. You're right. just purely reducing repair time. What's the combat speed of that Tiger Shark, though? Do you know? It's 30 on the surface, and what is it, 20%? Or what's the difference on underwater? So it's a 50% increased, right? So 45. 15 in it, yeah, somewhere like that. Or is it just the... No, actually, it's just... I don't think it's 50%. I don't think it's 50%. I think it's less than that. It's 50% of the weight, so you get that extra 7 or something. So okay. I was just asking, because yeah. I've, I've, I've got... The Sharon Torps, but I haven't fit them on anything yet because I've gone for combat speed with the B Torps. But I ain't got a Tiger Shark either. Yeah, you, you have know, Sharons and you're building bees? We need to have a little come to... Oh, if you have Sharon and you're building bees, we need to have a little come to Jesus meeting at some point. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that... You know, the, the, the big advantage of the Sharons, right, you, you've got the more damage, which is kind of obvious, but then maybe even a little less obvious, you've got the extra range, and you've got the extra projectile speed. So, um, yeah. those are, yeah. Oh, yeah, the All badass right. torpedoes are them, yeah. I've only just got them, so I've got to fit them onto everything yet. Right, right. And lucky for you, they, they brought the build time down. Now they're about, what, eight hours each? But well, by the time I get to make the, any kind of subs now, I've done my cutters already. But by the time I get to make any more now, it'll be Christmas. Well, you know, you might want to think about. I mean, if if you don't have a ship to do the raid, refitting your cudas might not be a terrible idea. 
there are some Sharon's on there. Well, they already had B-tops on, and I'd, I'd done each one, so I did four. I've done each one with um, Speed System 5, uh, Bat 3, and Cat 3. That's what they've got on them at the moment. Sure. And I, yeah, I mean, that's a decent, straightforward build, but I'm just thinking, you know, you, you replace those B-tops with Sharon's, you get, you'll slow down a bit, but they're already a fast hole. And you'll be doing a lot more damage at, at more range. Yeah, and how how much does that speed add to getting in the range? I mean, that's another whole thing. If, if you're in range quicker, you don't need to be as fast. It, well, it, it's not. It, well, it's different with me. I I don't get into range with them. I I don't like them getting into range with me. So I like in and out shoot. You know what I mean? If I have to. Okay. We done with stubs for now? Sure. I can't think of anything else to have on that. I can. If you want if you All want right. me to come see Jesus, come to my show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. We'll pimp everything at the end, I promise. Um <laughs> flagship subs. Um so we got a campaign coming to get uh, new phantoms uh, all the all the phantom flagships you excited all I can say to that is everybody and his brothers gonna have a invisible sub yeah yeah the uh, the thing I, I guess we all got to be cognizant of pattern with these TLCs has been you need you need something to win something. And so, you know, to win these subs, you're probably going to need some decent subs, right? And, and just kind of coming off the War Games uh, campaign where to win the new Conqueror Hall, you needed really both the old Conqueror Halls to win them without spending a mint. So, um, you know, you're not going to win these phantoms unless you've got some decent subs already. That's just my prediction. Mm. Okay? Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. That's the way they're going to run it. Yeah. <clears throat> unless they mess up in their minds. If they could add some of those scattered guns as well to those torpedo oh, prices. Okay. You want to see some... Uh, Cobras come back? Yeah, the same way that not in this DLC, but in the last one, we got some of those uh, limited uh, gales. Yeah. Yep. So yep. maybe it would be a good idea if they could add some of those. Maybe. Before we leave subs, I've got two fleets of Spectres. One's got Bs on and one's got Cs on. Cs were a, an early refit before they had Bs. They were just to do every single salvage from whatever level 17 to 51 on auto for free so that was, that's, that's what they were for. The Cudders I didn't get until about four raids ago and I fit them with bees to start with because I didn't have anything else except for them. I've got other torpedoes but I haven't got the scourged side of it. Yeah. Um, would you now build a Night Orc with Sharon torpedoes because I've got the Night Orc now or would you stick with putting Sharon's on everything else I've just mentioned. So, I would not build Nighthawks. Right. And, and, that, and that is because the Kudas and the Spectres got such a buff in the Foundry. Especially the Spectres. Um, Agreed, yeah. With what you just said, I would maybe refit the Spectres. Maybe Thank you. Your, you know, put, put Darren's on one of your Spectre fleets. And then add that third special, so you got you know the same as your Cuda, right? Speed, battery, and cat. Yeah. And I, I I think the Spectre got a real buff in the Foundry. You actually think like me because I were going to do the the Sea Torpedo fleet in, straight into um yep. that I forgot the name of Torpedo now, but that yeah that Torpedo. I mean, there's another issue with this question. I think is the fact that. Were you able to 
successfully complete any part of the last ra couple of raids? Uh, with a lot of help from stream, yeah. Plug again, sorry. Okay. <laughs> My bad. Okay. okay, well, if somebody's going to help you do the next raid, <clears throat> you could probably be uh, able to get the new sub and the new torpedo and the new special and not need to deal with retrofitting the older stuff. Well, we've, yeah, we've, we've, we've helped, helped, we've helped to, to finish them, so he's going to need a bit, a few subs to do something. And we have to see yet how much is the build time of the new one. So for a non-coiner, wait till the 11th to start to build uh, subs for the, I don't know, which is the second week of September that we are going to have the next one. They will, may not have time to have more than one or two. Yeah. And not yeah. even rank it to legendary because they don't have the, the ability to do that fast to be able for the BXP weekend. Well, on the, on the other side of the coin, I've got um, Apollo's building at the moment. I've got three blanks, all with um, Thud one on, and that's it. That's all I've got. So it took about five days and four hours or something like that to build each one. I built three, and now I'm going to start building one all with switchblades and specials that you need, obviously, for missile extenders and all that lot kind of thing. And um, I'm going to build a fourth one then. Uh, sorry, a second one to build, and then a fourth blank, and then a fifth blank, and then I'm going to refit the others so that I at least got two by before you're saying the eleventh when I could start night arc then. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's move on to screw-ups. See, they're they're cold and unhappy. Um, anyway, uh, so we got a few this week. Um, this Max uh, friends list has been a little drag on some people. I think we've been talking about this for a little while, right? Uh, I, I just chose not to drop it until they fix it. They, yeah, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. It just seems every raid, doesn't it? You, you lose... Exactly 25 of your friends. They've done it on the yeah. but now it's all. Yeah, but now it's all the time. It's now it's uh, perpetual. It looks like, and the funny thing is that you call the custom service, and they try to make you believe that it's not uh, a problem from their side when you are bored of seeing that raid after raid you get produced from 100 to 10, and now you are returning 25 after the last. Uh, update that they do to remove all the raid stuff and they pretend that you that is not their fault I don't know but I think they should get better uh, reasons to tell us why we don't can only have 25 and the problems is bringing to everybody that is trying to jump to friends when they have reduced and if they are going to do something like this and we just can keep 25 at least give us a chance to choose who we want to have on that list so we get the chance to decide to who we jump or not Oh, sorry, sorry I think I thought I had the wrong thing there. I, I were I were talking about wrong thing. I thought I thought they were on about your friends at the bottom of your Facebook page. Do apologize. No, we are, but yeah, I, I I'm thinking about restricting all my friends to only people that wear the shorts and uh, that are in that slide. <laughs> Do you think those those two ladies will be your friend? <laughs> they may already be. I'm not certain. <laughs> you know, I don't know their, I don't know them by name, but you know, okay. you know, but the shorts, you know, it's, you know, it's a possibility. Okay. Uh, all right. Next screw up is uh, war games again. I, I don't think this is maybe so much as an accidental screw up, but I think it's really player unfriendly. Um, just you know, the, the war games. It was. It was aimed at people that already had conquerors. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a new way to get a conqueror if you missed out on the old ones because you were in big trouble if you didn't have really both revenge and Well, I, I found it odd that that it required it didn't really require it unless you wanted to coin a lot. 
but the fact that the last target and price pack one was very difficult unless you own the vendetta in addition to the revenge because of the uh, the overwhelming um, executioners um, within that, which were you know which would tear up a uh, tear up a revenge. And it's uh, you know I thought you know at least the first level let you get away with only having revenges and maybe citadels or nova storms or something else like that that have remote targeting. But the fact that you know you you just put out a, a center island that's just designed to kill revenges in the first prize pack. You know, not, I'm not saying in general, but the fact that it was in the first prize pack, I wasn't a huge fan of. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, as someone with both revenge and vendettas, I thought it was kind of a cool campaign because you did have to kind of think and decide which which ships to send in and which ones to hold back. And you know, it was it was kind of cool, but uh, it, it would be tough if you didn't have the holes already. It's a good way to put all limited prizes as well. Yep. Can still but get these them. weren't limited prizes. I mean, you know, I mean that that first special in the the what is it, Atomic Warheads or something? Um, I mean, anybody using launchers wants that special. So. Mm, yeah, but launchers aren't going to be that good anymore, are they? Uh, well, you, you, have you seen the Cyclone launcher? Yeah. Okay, I, I think that one's pretty good. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I was in the yeah. Vanquishers, and I threw that special right on there. Okay, then last screw up, because we got three today. Um, there were a lot of problems after today's update. Um, performance, people couldn't get on, people couldn't get to the map. Uh, disturbed, you were you were kind of most pushing this one. Yeah, I had issues even logging on to the game, and it's never happened since I got this laptop for the past like three or four months. I haven't had lag, and then all of a sudden today, after their maintenance last night, I could barely load the game for like three or four hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had that as well. Uh, did did anybody else get the screen saying that you've got the game open in more than one place, SOS? Yeah, that popped up on mine, but it said it was an issue with launching a fleet, and I didn't even enter my docks. So. Yeah, well, it, it would dock returning, dock entering, uh, uh, out of, you know, going from map to base, wherever. It just kept throwing me out, saying I've got it open in more than one place, and I did not. I was streaming. But that's not the game open in more than one place. Uh, see, I didn't get that. I just got the, you know, not loading the game, and when you can load it, very laggy. So I just didn't play this morning. <laughs> and that were, that were happening as well from about midnight last night. Yeah, and it can't be comps or internet, because way too many people were affected. People in comms were saying they were. I messaged a couple of friends, they said they were getting it too, so it's not, you know, a select few, quite a few people were affected by it. Now, if you guys are talking about this happening last night, though, it might not be associated with the update. It was, because it came up, it's, it actually gives you an update message at midnight as well, because I'm on live when it's on there. Oh, okay. Alright, well, anyway, let's move on to the breakthrough, because I like her. Um... So, uh, the thing about the retribution, still quick repair, so that's good. Uh, you know, it does encourage base hitting, which uh, was really slow for a while. Yeah, my full fleet is seven coins repair. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's good. I mean, you want you want to be able, be able to hit bases and repair your fleet and hit again. Yeah. Um, and then you know, there was a lot of feedback. Um, I think recently they're, they're, you know, they released the Apollo, um, the first raid of this current raid cycle, and um, people said, well, that's the ship for this raid, and now nobody has it when you start the raid cycle. 
So they actually listened. I think this is listening. And uh, pulled up the Hellwraith so it's released before the raid cycle. And you can win it, and you can at least start building, right? You'll be able to build a couple, maybe, before the raid starts, if that's what you focus on. So uh, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I agree with that. The fact that you can have in this raid that I don't know how many, but let's be optimistic, 70% uh, maybe of the players now have uh, one or two Apollos to use with Rhinos or one other thing. So they get a good chance to probably be able to grab that new sub for the next raid. It's uh, a good improvement from them. Okay, are we done with the slides? Yeah, I was just going to say the um, L race. Now, if I get that, would I be better fitting that with Sharon Tops? Than bees, for sure. Yeah. Well, right. there's also going to be a new new torpedoes come out. We haven't seen the stats for. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but definitely better than bees or vortex or whatever. But yeah, yeah. I I would stop if you have Sharon's. I, I would stop. I would stop any sort of uh, refitting with bees, personally. Right. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. It's un sorry, Larry. It's undecided. You see, with a lot of people that say bees are better and Sharon's are better and sticks are better. So. I've just had my answer. Well, have you? I mean, so wait, who's saying bees are better and, and why? Um, I don't know. It's more. Oh, I don't know. I, could, I couldn't really. I, I, you've got to answer that to them. Do you know what I mean? Because when I try to answer it, I I can't say the same thing. But now I can. Yeah. I, I can mean, say you know, I was told. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, Back, you know, before they did the build time reductions, you know, you could at least say, well, bees are a reasonable build, and the and the uh, scourge ones are not. You know, those are huge builds before. Um, now they they cut down to the reasonable um, build time, and, and uh, I I don't know why you build bees. Well, that's why I say normally to them, watch this space, and we'll find answer for you. I would say that. I, by now, without seeing the new one, the, the Sharon is probably the best because with that range uh, of 88 instead of the 78 of the P, it gives you more room to to escape from the from the explosion. So because the far you are from the ship when it explodes, the less damage you will get. Yep. Yeah, and, 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 and I've been watching. And I've been watching the uh, not of my own volition, but I've been watching the show Botched. And they don't build a lot of bees. They're building D's and C's much more than the bees. <laughs> <laughs> this is a show about plastic surgery, okay? So they're building D's. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. Uh, with that, I will uh, exit the slides and uh, let this young lady take a break. Um, so um, we can address questions from chat real quick, but maybe just uh, shoot right over to an after show too. Um, I don't know. Did did we get a get? Do we get a consensus on the Cuda versus Hellwraith, which is more uh, phallic? <laughs> I think those slides keep people distracted. They couldn't think on that. No, I don't see any. <laughs> Um, and, and and the other issue is the the R five skin doesn't really well whatever I'm not sure if the R five skin is leading in any way but the uh, R five skin is not quite as phallic as the R zero skin. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I got some. I got a couple questions. I got one way back from the beginning. Prof, is Ghost Crawler still a viable ship? This is from Raiders eight oh eight. Um. Yeah, I think I think the Ghost Crawler is still viable. Um, it's I think with all the Vanquishers, it's probably pretty tough to get in bases with them now. 
Uh, I know one just tried sailing by my vanquisher and got spotted and took 50% damage in a, in a blank. But um, yeah, I, I fully intend to build a ghost crawler once I get enough shards. And, and in fact, with all the torpedo build time reductions, now you're talking like 25 days to build one instead of 40 plus. So yeah, I'd absolutely build a ghost crawler if I could and will when I can. Anyone else? Yeah, I don't use my ghost for hitting bases as much ever since they did the uh, the turn rebalance because if you it used to be I could enter deep dive rush something if something shot at me it was fine after it hit it wouldn't really do any damage and I'm referring mainly to uh, dead eyes after they did the the change if you enter deep dive ran something then popped back up out of thermal those dead eyes followed you hit you and they'd kill you so. I don't use mine too much for brace prepping unless somebody puts horribly placed thermal. Because you have to be able to not be spotted at all, depending on if they've got a decent base or not. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Don't see too much else. There was one question about um, going back to the subs. Somebody asked, you can't launch till 100% anyway. Does the efficiency matter? And I think the point we're trying to make is, yes, the efficiency matters because you can't launch till 100%. So you want to get those subs repaired as quick or as cheap as possible. And um, so, yeah, efficiency, that's, that's why that sub, build, uh, sub repair efficiency matters. Yeah, I wish they'd done the same for the ghost crawler because mine's still a 41 coin repair when dead. Yeah, I, I think I, I think it was very explicitly said they were not gonna uh, reduce the repair mod on the ghost crawler because they considered it still very powerful. Yeah, they're not going to, and that's kind of annoying because building my second one, I don't have the, uh, the score drama with the quicker repair on it, so it's going to be a much bigger repair bill. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I would say I'd build mine with probably no armor. Yeah, it's a little late for that. I already started it. It's got a D5S on it. Well, yeah. I mean, we had the guy asking in chat, and, and I'm still thinking for my, myself, maybe two raids from now, if they keep giving the ghost crawler shards like they have. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm still curious. <clears throat> I mean, it's sort of like, you you know, I have my second kept woman. It's sort of an odd, you know, most of, I don't think most of the people have the second ghost crawler. <laughs> no. Or the second kept woman. I mean, maybe, maybe Larry. But, but, yeah. I, I have Z well, just Mrs. Croft. I don't know if you can yeah, call her. <laughs> <laughs> All um, yeah, and then uh, one more question out of Clay. We got uh, any chance kicks further nerfs the targets to reduce concussion Gatling guns on surface ships? Uh, yes, anything is possible. Um, it, they may continue to tweak the targets, you know, between the 70s and the raid targets that they will be different and somehow concussion weapons will be very, the, the surface weapons will be very unuseful for some reason. Maybe they'll have splash resistance or something. It, it yeah, yeah, I, you know, I, I talked about it in the blog where, where you could do some surface builds with concussion weapons, but um, I, yeah, you are running a risk that Kick's Eye is going to make a change and make that non-useful. Well, anytime you have anything that works too well, there's a chance it's going to get nerfed. Well, yeah, and you know what? I don't think those surface guns work too well, right? I mean, they, they work all right, but it's not like they're a lot better than, than subs. You know, if you, if you drive perfect with subs, you can take very little damage if you got the explosive defense. I just finished my first sub today, so I'll see how I do. Okay. Should I post the... Uh, you want me to post the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, Hefe, why don't you go post the after show link? We'll, uh, 
Uh, well, actually, unless, unless you got anything else, I'm sorry. Go should, ahead. We should pimp. Okay, so visit us on the Battle Pirates Crib page, uh, Facebook page, which is where Hefe will post the um, after show link as soon as the broadcast is stopped. Um, so we'll do that, and then I guess it'll be first come first serve. And um, so, as you may know, I have a blog, bbprof.blogspot.com. Uh, G Daddy D, you have a Twitch stream. Where's that at? G Daddy? This is your chance. Pimp your, pimp your stream, man. <laughs> All right, he just vanished. Can you hear me? Hey, I, you're back. You gonna pimp oh, your can stream? you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you now. I was just doing it then. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize Mike had come out. Cat had been playing with Mike and pulled it out on him. You're pulling on Mike? Uh, yeah. Like <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, so where's your where's your uh, Twitch stream? Yep. Come and see me on uh, www.twitch.tv forward slash G Daddy D. All right. You have a fun time. All right, Tito, Disturbed, Hefe, you got anything you want to pimp? No, not particularly. All right. Well, thanks for coming out, watching the show, and uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, Hefe will post our after-show link right now. Good night, everybody. <laughs>